In this lesson, we're going to go ahead and work with an image button, which is going to allow us to turn on the looping for our sound. So basically, when the sound is played, I will have the option of telling it to loop through the sound to continue to play it over and over and over again, or to stop that loop. And when tuning an instrument, you may need that sound or that note to continue to play over and over again until your instrument is tuned. So we're going to set up the image button that will be used to control that. So I'm going to switch over now to the activity main.xml and switch over to the graphical layout. And within the screen, I'm going to go ahead now and move over an image button. So if I go to the images and media section of our palette, I'm going to find an image button, which is very similar to a regular button that we have to work with. It just allows for images rather than text. I'll go ahead and drag this over and I want this to be centered horizontally and I'm going to put this at the very bottom. And I'll go ahead and let go. Now I did not already create an icon for this one but I do want to use a system resource because we do have some things available already within our Android system that we can use. So I'm going to go ahead and choose to create a new icon. And the default name is IC Launcher which is not what I want to use because that's our launcher. I'm going to call this one IC for icon and call it loop underscore loop and I'll go ahead and hit next okay if I decide to choose the clip art option up here I can go ahead and hit the choose button now and choose from the resources or the clip art that we have within our application and the clip art that I actually want to use is located right here and it looks very close to a repeat or a replay option so this is perfect for the loop I'm gonna go ahead and select on that and you can see I have some other options in here to adjust the way the image looks. You can see the different sizes created here. I wanted circle. I could pick circle for my icon, square, or none. I'm going to go ahead and leave the square selected, but I want to change the colors up. Background color, I don't know about the red. I'm going to go ahead and choose an orange color here and hit OK. And then for the foreground color, let's go ahead and change that Let's see what white looks like. There we go. I'll use that for my icon color. Of course, you can choose any color that you would like. And you can adjust the padding that's within the square itself. I'm going to go ahead and move it over to 10%. I'll go ahead and hit finish. And you can see the IC loop or the icon loop that we just created is now available for us. I'll go ahead and hit OK and that created this icon here at the bottom of our screen. If I switch over to the code, I can find that particular item we just moved over within our first relative layout. And I'm going to go ahead and recommend that if you're going to create multiple tabs, you may want to create one tab structure completely the way that you want, copy that code over, and then paste it in, for instance, the third tab or the second tab because if we switch back over to the graphical layout, you'll notice that I have it here on this one, but I can't actually select tab two or tab three, or they don't make it very easy for us to work with the other tabs that I have in our layout. So if I'm gonna switch back over here to the code, and I'm only gonna be creating the first tab in this application, but if you were to continue this application, I'd recommend then being able to copy what you have here and then pasting it in the two other tabs once you have it set up. All right, I need to add the on click attribute to this one as well to handle a click event that I'll write in the Java file here. So let's go type in Android colon on click. And I'll just go ahead and give it a name of on button loop click. That will be the name of the method that I'll have to create on the activity file. Okay, let's go back to the graphical layout. And I want to go ahead and create one more system resource. Whenever this button is selected, I actually want it to change to an X to stop it instead of continuing this. So I can add an additional resource just as easy by dragging over another image button. I'll go ahead and just drag it over and getting this resource dialog option to come up. I'm going to go ahead and choose to create a new icon again. This time I'm going to call it IC stop underscore loop. I'll go ahead and hit next and I'll try to set it up very similar to what I had from before. If I go to the clip art and hit choose I should be able to find an X 
that can be used for a stop symbol. Of course, there's other things in here, such as this square that may be able to be used as well, but I'm just going to leave the X as my icon of choice. And I believe I had the padding down to 10% before. I had the color orange from right here as my background color, and my foreground color was white. I'll go ahead and hit OK again, and I'll go ahead and hit Finish. And what we just did was created another project resource called IC Stop Loop using the same method we did originally. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and I don't actually need it on my screen for right now. I'm going to go ahead and hit Delete. What I'll do later on is, in the code, whenever this button is selected, I want to switch the icon to the other option. And if I restore this down, you can see in my drawable folders that I do now have the launcher, I have the loop, and then I have the stop loop icons all available for me to work on, even through the code. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and save my work now for this lesson, and that concludes this lesson.